<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video I'm going to be showing you all how you can update your NAND on your Xbox 360. Specifically, this is for hard modded systems such as a JTAG or an RGH of some kind, and I know this seems to be a bit more of a basic video, but I've done one or two videos like this in the past, and I just want to kind of update this here to have it be at least a little bit better for my own standard, so I would be happier with this here, just because I'm changing it up a little bit in terms of the software and such I use here, just to keep it all up to date. Now, thankfully, we're in a day and age where you shouldn't need to do this all too often, because if you stay current with your dashboard version, really, there's little to no dashboard or kernel updates that release these days. However, this video is probably going to be more for people who maybe if there is a dashboard version out there that ends up updating, you want to update to this, or if you have a older system that hasn't been updated in quite a while and you want to install the latest dashboard update on your system, I'll show you how to do so. You're going to need a few things. You're of course going to need your Xbox 360 itself, which has been hard modded. You're going to need a USB drive and you're going to need a computer with internet access. So I'll show you how to do everything here. Now as an added bonus, if either you backed up your dashboard files when you modified your console or you got your console modified by someone, they should have, if they were a good installer, provided you with a backup of your system files and such. If you do not have that, then don't worry, I'm going to be showing you how to make a NAND backup on here. However, if you do have it, that will save you a few steps and a few minutes here. But don't worry, I'll show it all from start to finish. Either way, what we can do here is get our USB drive set up for this update process. So real quick, I'll show you how you can actually format this on your Xbox 360 if you're able to. I'm saying if we're able to because this changes a little bit on later dashboard revisions, but what we can do is if you're running a custom dashboard such as Aurora, you can just bring up the guide and go over to your system settings and exit out. Once we're in the system settings, go ahead, plug in your USB drive, wait for it to initialize, and you can come over to the storage section here after a bit. Now in here, as you can see, I have a USB drive that is plugged in, and if you're able to, do keep in mind, keep in mind here that this will format everything and erase everything on the USB drive, so if you have any files you care about, you should back them up now, but if you don't care about the files or you have them backed up, you can highlight your drive, press the Y button over it, and hit format. You can go ahead and say yes to this here, and let it format. I like doing this here on the Xbox 360 just because we make sure it's recognized and formatted all properly and accordingly to the system. So once this has been formatted, we can now remove our USB drive and go over to our console. Now once this has been formatted, we can now remove our USB drive and we can take it over to our computer. Over at our computer, plug in the USB drive of course, and we're going to check the properties on here by right clicking, looking at properties, and our goal is we want our file system to be FAT32. That's going to be recognized on the Xbox 360 itself, and if we can enter this, then we should be all good. Now if something happens where for example, you format the USB drive and all the storage is taken up on here, or if you can't format the USB drive on your system like it might be that old, I'll show you how to format it on the computer as well. For this, I'll be using a program called Rufus, and all the links to the downloads you'll need will be down below in the description. So you can go ahead, download Rufus, and if you want to, just download the portable version. We don't have to install it, but if you want to install it, you can download the regular version. Once you have your Rufus EXE here, just go ahead, take note of your drive, mine is drive J, and we can exit out of our Windows Explorer window. Now go ahead, open up Rufus. If it gives you a prompt like this, say yes. And if you want to allow it to check for updates, that's up to you, I'll say yes to this. And at this point, make sure you've picked your USB drive. For the boot selection, we're going to say non-bootable. For the partition scheme, we must make sure this is MBR. This is important for the Xbox 360. And we need to make sure this is set to the FAT32 file system. The volume label can be whatever you want to here, and the cluster size default is fine. Once all that is set up, we can click on Start and hit OK on here. Do keep in mind, again, this is going to wipe any data you care about off of this USB drive. 
So once that's all completed, click on close. We can come back over here and if we check this out, yet again, we do see that our drive is now formatted to the FAT32 file system and we've made sure it's in BR so it should be recognized on the Xbox 360. Now there will be a few downloads that we'll need here. I'm going to have this page actually linked down below as well too from console mods showing how to update your kernel or dashboard. And there is a nice bit of information here that is all written out. However, here we're going to change it slightly uh, just because I'm going to be using, for example, instead of XE build, I'm going to be using JRunner. So what we can do here is find the download for Simple 360 NAND Flasher. Once we have this open, go ahead, download this and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Next, we're going to need the latest build of JRunner with extras because this will typically have the latest dashboard files packed into it. Come over to Downloads over on Octal's console shop site and click on JRunner with Extras. From here, download the latest JRunner with Extras zip file. And finally here, assuming you're going to be downloading the latest dashboard and setting this up here, we're also going to need the avatar data. So we're actually going to come to the official Xbox site, like the support Xbox site, and scroll down to the update section here on how to update. You're going to open up this section, come over to copy to a USB flash drive, and download the update file somewhere you can easily find it. Oh, and for that RAR file for Simple 360 NAND Flasher, if you need something to extract it, 7-Zip is usually my go-to for this. So awesome, we do have a few things here that we're going to be working with. First of all, let's go ahead and extract the Simple 360 NAND Flasher. For this, you can right-click on this archive, go to 7-Zip if you're going to use that, and extract it to its own directory. You should get a directory like this, open that up, and inside of here you're going to find a readme file and the simple 360 NAND flasher folder. Go ahead, check out the readme real quick. I recommend giving this a quick read just because, I mean, it's quick enough, it's informative, and it gives you some peace of mind just knowing exactly what you're going to be doing on here as well too, uh, just in terms of features and such. So that's why I would recommend giving this a quick once over. But either way, I'll show you what we need to do here. So we can go ahead, exit out of this. Now you can grab the simple 360 NAND flasher folder. We're going to copy that out, go over to our USB drive, and we can just paste it into the root of the USB drive. Once that's been transferred over, come back over to our computer, right click your USB drive, and safely eject it, and move that back over to the console. Over at your console, once you plug your USB drive back in, you're going to need to launch either your custom dashboard or something else that will allow us to launch our homebrew. So for this here, you could either just do it through Aurora, or in my case, I'm just going to go through XEX menu right here, just because I'm at the standard dashboard. I'll go ahead and sign into my account. And from here, you're going to want to navigate to your USB drive, go into symbol 316 and flasher, and open up the default.xex file. Now it will pull back all this lovely information right here. Really, all you need to do is press the X button. So press that and give it some time to now dump the NAND from your system over to the USB drive. And there we go. At this point, it's been dumped, so we can press any key to exit, which I'm doing so right there. And once the program exits, we should be, here we go, Aurora opens up. So once we're back at any point, once this has closed up, we can just go ahead and remove our USB drive yet again, and take it over to our computer. Over at your computer, navigate to your USB drive, Simple 316 NAND flasher, and you're going to have two very important files here. You should have your flashdump.bin and your CPU key.txt. These are going to be super important to have on hand. What I would recommend is just right click, you can cut these out, and you can move them somewhere safe on your computer just in case you don't have a NAND dump. So in this case, I would just call this, you know, console NAND or whatever else you want to call this. Keep in mind this CPU key and flashdump.bin, these are going to be console specific. So you don't want to use these on any other consoles you have. These are going to be per console. But either way, we can come in here and paste over our files. And once those have transferred over, we can move on to the next step now that we have our NAND backup. Our next step is going to be JRunner with extras working with this. Again, we can right click the zip file and we can just extract it into its own folder. Once we have this, we can open it up, 
and open up the JRunner executable. You should get a little something like this here. What you can do is click on load source, navigate over to wherever your flash dump dot bin is, double click that. And you can see here, if you have previously worked on this console on this same computer, hopefully your CPU key should automatically populate on here. You can even verify this by, as you can see, I have all the bootloaders and lockdown values here, but you can also check the bad blocks and you can even look at your key vault information. Everything should be showing up here if you have your CPU key in there. If you don't have yours automatically populate, don't worry, pretty simple to do here. Just quite literally go into the CPU key.txt. You're going to have a random string of numbers and letters. You're just going to highlight all of it, copy it out, paste it into the CPU key text box here, and then click on reload. And once you do that, you should have your NAND decrypted, which is exactly what we need. So at this point, we can now build our update file. So for this, we are going to select our kernel version, which typically you'll just want to go to the latest one, which is here by default, and keep this number in mind. Now you're also going to want to check that system update that you downloaded earlier. As you can see, the kernel version I would be updating to, even though I'm already on it in this case, is 17559. Now, if you check your update file, you're going to want to see the number that is in there. If it is matching that one that you downloaded from the Xbox site, then you should be good at this point here for that avatar data. And it would be helpful to know what type of system you have, although thankfully JRunner seems to be able to cover it. Mine loaded up here, as you can see, as a glitch to image, which has RGH3 enabled, which is exactly what I am using here. So just make sure it has that there. Like for example, if you know you have RGH3, it should look a little something like this. If you have a console that you know has the WB2K flag checked there, make sure you have that. Same if you require SMC plus or anything else on there. But once you have all these settings dialed in, we can click on create XE build. And here we go. At this point, it has created our flash file that we need. So you can click on load source and we're going to look for the directory where this has been saved to and just drill into that. Typically, this is just going to be within the JRunner with extras directory. Within JRunner with extras, you should see a new folder up top, which is a random assortment of numbers. That's going to be the console serial number for the console you just created a NAND for. Go ahead, drill into that folder. Inside of this folder, you're again going to have your CPU key, your KV info, and your update flash file, your UPD file flash.bin. What I would also recommend here is just go ahead, grab all of these files. You can copy or cut them out and just paste them in the same directory where you have your existing console update and such there, the one that we've just dumped. So now keep in mind, this flash dump is going to be our original dump, but the UPD flash.bin is the one that we're going to be working on. So what we need to do is grab the UPD flash.bin and you could even grab this CPU key if you want to. We're going to copy both of these out, go into the USB drive yet again, go to Simple360 NAND Flasher, and we're going to paste in both of these files, the CPU key text and the UPD flash.bin. And if you have a log right here, we can go ahead and get rid of this because we're going to generate a new one. So now with our new update file on hand, we can move back over to the console. Of course, once you come back here, right click and safely eject your USB drive. Once the USB drive has been plugged in, we can go ahead and launch that same program. So I'll go over to my file browser in this case, go to USB zero, simple 316 and flasher, and run the default.xex. You should get this same screen here, except it's going to look a little bit different. So it's going to give you a few options. You can, of course, flash your NAND. If you press the A button, if you press the B button, it's going to dump and then write your NAND over, which we don't necessarily need to do since we've already dumped our NAND, and press X to dump your NAND, of course. What we should be doing at this point is just pressing the A button to flash our NAND over. Now, again, at this point here, you are going to want to make sure that update file was created for this specific system in mind. You want to make sure that's all good. You do not want to flash another update file from another system to this console here. But once you are all ready to go, you'll press the A button. And if you are sure you want to do this, press the start button on your controller. 
At this point, put your controller over to the side, don't touch your console, and just let this do its own thing. And as you can see, we are all good to go. So in a few seconds, it's going to shut down the console and then reboot. And as you can see, we were able to update the system successfully because this is up and running. Thank goodness we were able to get to the boot anim. And if we give this a few seconds here, we should come back over to Aurora. Let's see. Yep, Aurora is launching. So we're all good to go at this point. Thankfully, the NAND has been updated on here. But one final thing, if you have updated your system kernel, you are also going to need the avatars data on here. You might not necessarily require it, but it would be good to have on hand. So with that, go ahead, unplug your USB drive one last time from your console, and we're going to move back over to our PC for the final step. Go into the system update folder this is extracted to, and this will be important. We have to rename this system update folder. It's going to have a cache sign before it, and it's going to say cache system update. We're going to replace this S right here with a cache or a dollar sign. So it should be dollar sign, dollar sign, system update. It should look exactly like this. Once you have that slightly modified, we're going to copy this out, go to our USB drive, and in the root of the USB drive, we're going to paste this in. And here we go. Once this has been completed, right click on your USB drive, eject this yet again, and move it back over to your console. Over the console, we would need to access the original dashboard. So if you're running a custom dashboard, press the guide button, go over to system settings and press yes. Now, when you exit out to the original dashboard, if you're signed into your account, if you check out the social tab here, you should see that you don't have any avatar data, which is exactly why we're doing all this. So what we can do is while at the original dashboard, take your USB drive and plug it in. If you get an update prompt like this, then you can continue on. But hold on, I'm going to show you something else here real quick. Big shout out to consolemod.org for pointing this out. But this is the exact image that you should be seeing right here or the exact message that you should be getting, which is what we have. If you see this, you're okay to go. But if you see this exact update message, you do not want to continue on with this. You can brick your console if you see one that looks like this. However, if your update message looks like this, you can come up here and say yes and let it do its thing. It will now extract out all of the avatar data to your console storage and then reboot the system. Once your console reboots, go ahead, exit back out to the original dashboard, come over to social and check this out. You should see your avatar picked out, moving around and all that fun stuff. Now, if for some reason you don't have an avatar which is showing like mine in all the detail, you might not have had an avatar assigned to your account. So for that, you can always just go into your account and go over to the customize avatar section and then at that point you can choose and create an avatar for your account. Either way, you should be all good to go at this point here with a fully updated NAND, dashboard, and avatar files to boot on here. Congratulations, you should be done. Anyways, that is about it for this video here. I hope you all liked it. I hope it helped out. If it did, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.